we are in chapter 10, Parametric Equations and Polar Coordinates. Section 10.1 is curves defined by parametric equations. In algebra, we introduce to the idea of plane curves by graphing y as a function of x or x as a function of y. This chapter introduces us to another method of describing curves by introducing a third variable, t, called a parameter. The box right below says, suppose that x and y are both given as functions of a third variable t called a parameter by the equations x equals f of t and y equals g of t, called parametric equations. Each value of t is determining a point x comma y, which can be plotted on the coordinate plane. As t varies, the points x comma y or f of t comma g of t vary and trace this curve called c which we call a parametric curve. The parameter t does not necessarily represent time, but in many applications, t does denote time, and we interpret x comma y as f of t comma g of t, as the position of a particle at time t. So for example, if we were to say we have an interval, and our interval is going to be going from a to b, and this is the interval for our parameter, and our parameter is going to be t. And so as we graph this function, x comma y, these points, we're going to first start at the first value of t, which we're going to call t naught. And so I'm going to say, as I substitute in these values of t, or at t naught, at that initial point, I'm going to get an x value and a y value in that corresponds to a point. So this would be our initial point. I'm also going to abbreviate that as IP as initial point. And the initial point would be when T is equal to T naught. And we would have, since that was the initial value for us on that interval, we would have F of A comma G of A. And as we go, let's say the next value we plug in, T is equal to T sub 1. And then the next value we'll say is t equals t sub 2, and so on, plotting all these different points. And I'll just randomly put some points down here. And then the last value that we get to is going to be when we have t equals t sub n. And this is going to be our terminal point. Or I'm going to call tp for terminal point. And B was that ending part of our interval. And so this is going to correspond to F sub B comma G sub B. And likewise, the point right before that, so that order parity of NT at T sub N minus 1. So connecting these points as T progresses, And to show the movement of this, or the position of that particle, we're going to throw in some arrows symbolizing which direction this is moving. So the example right below says, sketch a curve by using the parametric equation to plot points. Indicate with an arrow the direction in which the curve is traced as t increases. Part 2 says eliminate the parameter to find the Cartesian equation of the curve. A Cartesian equation is just in terms of x and y, so like what you would have seen in an algebra class. So part a says x equals t cubed plus t and y equals t squared plus 2, and the values of t are going to go between negative 2 and positive 2. And so just like how we did in algebra, I'm going to set up a table, but this time for my table I need to have three variables. I actually have t, the parameter that we're going to have, which goes between negative 2 and positive 2. And then using these values I need to find x and y. And so for the first one, substituting a negative 2 into the equation to find x, we have negative 2 cubed, which is negative 8, plus negative 2, 
which works out to be negative 10. The corresponding y value we would get would be to substitute in t is negative 2 into the value of y equals t squared plus 2. So negative 2 squared is 4 plus 2 would make that 6. And then likewise doing the same thing for negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1 minus 1 would be negative 2. Substituting into the y equation, we would have negative 1 squared, which is positive 1 plus 2 is 3. And doing this for the remaining values, we get 0, 2, 2, 3, and 10, and 6. So from here, it does say to sketch a curve. And so we have these ordered pairs that we are going to go ahead and sketch. Like the first one would be negative 10, 6. The second one would be negative 2, 3, 0, 2. 2, 3, and 10, 6. So going ahead and setting up a graph here, a coordinate plane, I'm going to make sure that my x values go between positive 10 and negative 10. And then my y values need to go from, we'll say 0 all the way up to positive 6. And now plotting these points, and again, this is our x, y coordinate or our coordinate plane. And so first value we have is at negative 10 comma 6. Second point that we have is going to be at negative 2 comma 3. The next order pair we have is at 0, 2, then 2, 3. And then the last order pair is going to be 10 comma positive 6. And so as t progresses, we are going to connect these points and this would be our initial point and this would be when t is equal to negative 2 and then our terminal point is going to be when t is equal to positive 2 and so this moves in a motion going from that initial point to the terminal point and likewise, you can see that this value, this order pair here, was when t was equal to negative 1. The value down here is when t is equal to 0. And then the next value would be when t is equal to positive 1. Part 2 says to eliminate the parameter to find the Cartesian equation of the curve. And that means we're going to rewrite this equation in terms of just x's and y's and not have that third variable t in it. So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and look at the second equation that we have, which is y equals t squared plus 2. And I'm going to solve this for t. So in order to do that, I'm going to subtract 2. And then I'm going to take a square root. And we'll say plus or minus the square root of y minus 2. And then I'm going to substitute this into the equation that we have for x. And so we would have x is equal to, and it's t cubed plus t. So every time I see a t, I'm going to write down plus or minus the square root of y minus 2 cubed. And then we have plus or minus the square root of y minus 2. And so this is equivalent to and since we have both of these terms have a plus or minus square root of y minus 2, I can factor that out. Left over, I would have a y minus 2, the square root of that, squared, since I already factored 1 out, which would just be y minus 2. And then I already factored out the plus or minus, so I just have plus 1. So this would simplify to plus or minus the square root of y minus 2 times y minus 1. And this would be our Cartesian equation. So you'll notice that this equation is only in terms of x's and y's. And we got rid of that parameter t that was originally in our equations. So part b on the next page, same directions. And so the first thing that we're going to do is create a table again. This time, if you notice, we don't have values of t that 
it goes between like it did in the last one. So you kind of have to think about the equations that you're given. And so since this is a radical, we know that t can't be negative. So we're going to say t is going to be an element of the interval from 0 to infinity. And so with that said, our starting value, that initial point, will be when t is equal to 0. So we have t and then x and y. So we're going to start this at 0. And I'm going to select some nicer values for t. Um, since I'm dealing with the square root, I'm going to select 4 and 9 also, besides just 1. And substituting this in, the square root of 1 is 1, square root of 0 is 0. y is equal to t, so that one would be easy to fill in. And then the square root of t is what x is, so this would be 2 and 3. And so now sketching this, we have all positive values. And our x values are going to be between 0 and 3 here. And our y values are going to go all the way up to 9. So the first ordered pair that we have, when t is equal to 0, we have 0, 0. When t is equal to 1, we have 1, 1. Then we have 2, 4, 3, comma 9. And this does continue on. So a little different from the last one because the last one was a closed interval. And this one, it does continue on. So I'm actually going to go past these points. And again, our initial value here, our initial point would be when t is equal to 0. We don't have a terminal point for this one, but we can see as t increases, it's going to be moving up in this upward direction. So I'll even go past our arrow there. So part two was to rewrite this as a Cartesian equation, so only in terms of x's and y's. And so we can see that y is equal to t. And so substituting this into our x equation, we get x equals the square root of t, and t is equivalent to y. And so you can notice that our Cartesian equation here is in terms of just x's and y's and not the parameter t. The next example, c, looks very similar to the one right before it. And this time we have x is equal to t and y is equal to t squared. This time, if you notice, these are both polynomials, and so we have no restrictions in terms of the t values. So I'm going to say t can be an element from negative infinity to positive infinity. And so I cannot substitute in all these values. I'm just going to pick a handful of them to plug in for t. And so I'm going to say we'll go from negative 2 to positive 2. If you need additional points, you can definitely do that. And then we need to get our x and y values. And so x is equal to t. So I'm just going to copy down all these values since they are equal. And then y is equal to t squared. So negative 2 squared is 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. And so from now, from the table that we have, we're going to go ahead and sketch this. Again, everything is positive. The x values are to positive 2 and negative 2. The y values go up to 4. So the first point that we have, which is not our initial point, since our initial point would be at negative infinity or that idea of something very, very, very small. And so when t is equal to negative 2, the order pair that's equivalent at that is going to be negative 2, comma 4. So this is when t is equal to negative 2. When t is equal to negative 1, we have negative 1, comma 1, then 0, 0. 1, 1, and then when t is equal to positive 2, we have 2, comma, 4. And so connecting our ordered pairs, and then as this, the direction of this moves, put those arrow tips on so you can see that. And then part 2 was to rewrite this as a Cartesian equation. And we know that x is equal to t. And so all that I'm going to do is rewrite our y equation by 
substituting in x for t since they're equal. So we get y equals x squared. Notice that our equation does not have any t's in it. We got rid of our parameter. Part D, we're going to go ahead and circle, and we'll look at that one together in class. The next example says, 1. Eliminate the parameter to find the Cartesian equation of the curve. Part 2 says to sketch the curve and indicate with arrows the direction in which the curve is traced as the parameter increases. So for part A, the equations that we have is x equals 1 half cosine theta and y equals sine theta. And theta is between 0 and pi. So you'll notice that this time our parameter is not t, it is theta. And so in order to do this, the first part says to rewrite this as a Cartesian equation. So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 for the x equation. So I have 2x is equal to cosine of theta. And likewise, I'm going to get our sine of theta by itself. And I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Or rewrite this as 1 half y equals sine of theta. So this one's a little different from the ones that we just did previously in the, in the lecture video, since these are not polynomials, these are in terms of trig functions. And we do know that sine and cosine have a relationship between them, and that is that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Well, we know that sine theta is equal to 1 half y. So sine squared theta would be squaring that value, plus cosine theta is equal to 2x, and so we can square that also. And this would be equal to 1. You can rewrite this as 1 fourth y squared plus 4x squared is equal to 1. And if you remember, this is an ellipse, so very similar to a circle. And um, however, because those values are not the same in front of the x squared and the y squared, we do not have a circle, we have an ellipse. And so a way to think about this would be y squared equals 2 over 2 squared plus x squared over, and to rewrite the 4, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half squared. And so this is an ellipse with x-intercepts of plus or minus one-half, which is the value underneath our x squared, and then y-intercepts equal to plus or minus two. And so we also know that theta is going to be between zero and pi, so before we sketch this, anything about where this is starting and stopping. I know that it's going to be making an ellipse. I also need to think about the direction of flow that these points are going to be moving. So we have when theta is equal to 0. And when theta is equal to 0, we are going to have x is 1 half cosine theta. And cosine of 0 is 1. So we would have 1 comma. And then for our y value, sine of 0 is just 0. And then we also need to have our other endpoint, and we'll find one in the middle. And our, our terminal point would be at pi. So this would be our initial point. Our terminal point's at pi. And so if you substitute in pi for cosine of pi, we get 1 half times negative 1, or negative 1 half. And then sine of pi is just going to be 0. We need to find another value, 2, and I'm going to go ahead and say this is pi over 2. And so cosine of pi over 2 would be 0. And sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1. 1 times 2 is 2. And so on our graph, I'm going to plot all three of these points. And so our x values. We'll say this is 1 half and negative 1 half since those are the largest x values that we have. And then our y values are going to extend up to 2. And so our initial point would be at theta equals 0 or 1 half comma 0. 
and this would be when theta is equal to zero or our initial point. And then the next point we go to, the next order pair is zero, two, and then the last point that we have, or our terminal point, is gonna be when theta is equal to pi. And so we know that this makes an ellipse, but you'll notice it's not a whole entire ellipse, it's only half of an ellipse that we have. So connecting our points and going from initial point to terminal point, put those arrow tips on. The next example says x equals e to the t and y equals e to the negative 2t. So the first part says to eliminate the parameter and find the Cartesian equation. And so first thing that we know is that we don't have values that t is ranging between. So we know that t would be able to take on any value, so it would be between negative infinity and positive infinity. However, substituting in, in any value for t, we know that x will always be positive greater than zero. And likewise for y, we would also be greater than zero for this. Um, so in order to rewrite this as a Cartesian equation, I'm going to go ahead and write down y equals e to negative 2t. And I'm just going to rearrange the order of my exponents here. And so this is e to the t times negative 2. And then rewriting this again, this is the same thing as e to the t negative 2. And so this is all equivalent. And we know that e of t is the same thing as x. So I'm going to rewrite this as y equals x to the negative 2, or we can write this as y equals 1 over x squared. So this would be our Cartesian equation. So part 2 says to sketch the curve and indicate with arrows the direction in which the curve is traced as the parameter increases. So in order to do this, I'm going to select a few values of t to plot. I'm just going to use negative 1, 0, and 1. If you do need more values, you can definitely pick more. Um, but substituting these in, when x is equal to negative 1, I get an x value of 0 0.37 and a y value of 7.39. When t is 0, x is 1, and y is 1. And then when t is positive 1, we get 2.72 for x and our y value is going to be 0 0.14. And so since our values of x and y are always positive, we know that we will only be in quadrant 1. So our x and our y. And so you can see that just 1, 1 when t is equal to 0. And then when t is equal to negative 1, we have 0 0.37 and I'll put the other value up here. They'll say this is when t is equal to negative 1. And then when t is equal to positive 1, our x value would be 2.72, but our y value would be small, 0.14. And so as t increases, and we connect those points in that order, this does continue on and make sure you put those arrow tips showing the direction that it is going. We have another example on the next page that I'm going to go ahead and circle, and we'll look at that one together in class.